The Lord is the strength of our life. Who shall we fear? Even if an army encamps around us, we're not going to fear. We're going to be confident because our confidence is in the Lord. That's the voice of Toby DeBoss, president of the Crisis Pregnancy Center of Tidewater. He joins us today to talk about the wave of attacks launched against pro-life clinics across the nation in the wake of the Dobbs decision and how we can respond in faith and love. Welcome to Speak Up Virginia, equipping you to speak up on the life, family, and freedom issues that matter most to you. From the Family Foundation, I'm your host, Candy Cushman, and I'm joined today by our special guest, Toby DeBoss. Toby, welcome to our show. It's an honor to have you on today. Hey, Candy, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great. Well, just to help people get to know you a little better and understand what you do on a daily basis, tell us what's involved with being president of the Crisis Pregnancy Center of Tidewater. Yeah, well, our ministry, we have five locations in the Southampton Roads area, so in the in all the major cities there. So Virginia Beach, uh, Chesapeake, Norfolk, Portsmouth, Suffolk. And uh, there, that's where we have our pregnancy medical clinics and our, we have three pregnancy medical clinics and two uh, non-medical pregnancy resource centers. And uh, through these centers, like I love this ministry, you know, people often ask me, uh, why do women have abortions? And I can answer that after being on staff for 22 years, like I get it. Like the number one reason why women have abortions is because of fear fear of something, fear of what mom and dad are going to think, fear they can't finish college, fear of what's going to happen to their relationship with their boyfriend. And so one of the great things that our pregnancy centers do is we come alongside that mom and help her navigate through that fear. And and not only that, um, you, you know, even though we live in this world where <laughs> There is so much information at our fingertips. It's amazing to us uh, how unaware moms are, new moms are, about what's going on inside of them as their little ones developing. So, you know, there are some folks out there that will not recognize the preborn child as a human being, but we do. Not only do we acknowledge them as human beings, but but we reveal them uh, to these moms and dads. And it's just such a powerful moment when a mom and dad gets to see the beating heart of their baby for the first time. And I'll also say this, Candy, if we're talking about the work of pregnancy centers, um, you know, there's a myth out there, and it's not a myth, it's just a big old lie, that people who care about children in utero don't care about the children once they're born or their parents. And that's just not been true of any of the folks who I know that love life. And um, in our ministry, uh, families, when, when they choose life, uh, we continue to come alongside of them with our, our parenting classes. And our parenting classes are 20 weeks long, covering everything from uh, labor and delivery to infant CPR. And we, we work with uh, teams of folks who, even after those 20 weeks are over, they have a commitment of one year to help walk it out with these families. So, you know, look, we cared very deeply about that little one, about the mom, and about the dad. Jesus loves them all, and so do we. Yeah, anybody that has been able to spend time at one of these pregnancy resource centers will see this is one of the most compassionate, effective ministries out there. Really, it's incredible what you do just with the ultrasound services. I know you provide prenatal vitamins, medical consults. It it really is incredible, even parenting classes with Bible studies. Um, so one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show today was to help listeners understand these unprecedented efforts, attacks to shut down ministries like yours and what you are facing, not only in Virginia, but across the nation. And as president, Toby, of one of the largest of those centers, you said you ha you have five that you're working with in a big region in Virginia. I know you've really got your finger on what's happening with that. So just help us understand for a minute how you have seen these attacks escalate in the wake of the, the Supreme Court, Dobbs decision itself, and why is this happening? Yeah, you know, uh, we've always had opposition, but we've never seen opposition the way we're seeing it now. And, and especially, and, and there, there's very different, there's so many different points of attack, but one point of attack that has been stirred up, and it's really happened since the, the first leak of the document from the Supreme Court uh, regarding Dobbs and Roe. Um, but ever since that leak happened, uh, there has been uh, 
violence, you know, like pregnancy centers, like people are really upset about what's going on out there. And pregnancy centers are the tangible targets for this unrest and vitriol. And so uh, it's, it's led to the, to the level of violence. There's a group out there, uh, they call themselves Jane's Revenge. Now, I don't know who Jane's Revenge is. Some folks call them domestic terrorist groups, a domestic terrorist group. I don't know. It could be a guy in his mom's basement just sending out communiques and stirring people up. But it's stirring people up. And so what's happened is, from what I understand, and there's been uh, at least 100 incidents, almost all of them involving uh, pregnancy centers, and, and it's been violent. I mean, firebombs. I, I, I know Com Compass Care in Buffalo, New York. We're all independent. Not all pregnancy, you know, all pregnancy centers are independent. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have one big CPC in Houston that we all answer to, but we share a similar mission and methodology and we care about each other. And so I know the Buffalo uh, clinic was firebombed uh, here in Virginia uh, in Lynchburg, the Blue Ridge Pregnancy Center. Oh, that that center was torn apart. The windows busted, spray painted everywhere. And uh, I don't actually talk much about this, but uh, even in our own ministry, we have, again, the five locations, but our location in Norfolk was vandalized. Someone spray painted the front of our building. They did it very quickly, spray painted the front of our building. They spray painted Jane's Revenge. And, um, and yeah, so, you know, we, we've had opposition, but this level of hostility is really new to us. Why do you think that's happening? Because it would, it's kind of odd that they would just target pregnancy resource centers like that, that, you know, usually they're not out in the front, you know, of the media or uh, highlighted like that. So it's just odd that they would go and find these centers that really aren't asking for attention like that. So why, why do you think we're experiencing this? Well, again, like I said, we're the tangible targets. You know, uh, there are so many people uh, overturning Roe was a very unpopular decision. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that five justices uh, put to right what should have never happened over 50 years ago. But it, it's been put to right in a country where the culture is, is, is an abortion culture. Like, like we've used abortion as birth control. Nobody says that out loud, but you know, you always, when, when there's debates about abortion, they always roll out the hard cases, rape, incest, life of the mother. That's what they want to talk about. But by far, you know, that's a very small percentage of abortions. By far, abortion is uh, not because the, the mother's life is threatened or, or the child has, you know, a, a prenatal, a poor prenatal, prenatal diagnosis. And, and so what's been happening in this country is abortion has been used as birth control. Moms have had multiple abortions. I mean, uh, good rates to Roe because since Roe, there have been over 62 million children that have died in its wake. And so because our country has become dependent on it as birth control and the false notion that it's a constitutional right, well, there you go. If it's a constitutional right and suddenly you're taking what they perceive as a constitutional right away from them, they're just squeezing harder. They're holding on. And so it has caused a lot of of animosity. And what are they going to do with that animosity? They did try to shame a justice out of his dinner at a restaurant in DC, um, but they can't do a whole lot. Uh, they haven't been able to do a whole lot in terms of, uh, of the laws. And so, you know, we're the tangible targets and pregnancy centers. There's thousands of pregnancy centers across this country. Look, we serve women who have scheduled their abortion and they come to us and they change their minds. And, and I've heard some of them praise God that <laughs> they changed their minds. And, and what it is is that the ministry is effective at affirming life. You know, death is, death is terrible. Life is good. And, 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 and these ministries are very effective in what we do. And so it, it puts the big target on our backs. Thanks for joining us for Speak Up Virginia, brought to you by the Family Foundation. If you're enjoying the show, help us encourage others to speak up by giving us a five-star review and sharing it with friends. Thanks for listening. Well, I think a great example of what you're saying is what you were telling me before we got on here about this tweet that went out from U.S. Senator Mark Warner. Tell me about that, because I think that's pretty significant, what he was saying about, well, we couldn't, this happened, we couldn't get this law through, so now we're doing this. Will you talk a little bit about that? 
Yeah, I don't have the tweet right in front of me, but it was something in, in terms of uh, he has been leading a campaign. Maybe we should start there. Like he has led a campaign uh, to gather up um, 13 other U.S. senators, eight uh, from the House, uh, to write a letter to Google asking Google to manipulate the search results so that pregnancy centers don't come up when women who are seeking abortion search. And um, so he's led that campaign. And in that letter, um, they, were, they were very insulting. They called us fake clinics. And you know what, Candy, I'm going to tell you this. I know that he has a different viewpoint than me, but, and I'm not, you know, hey, I'm grateful the Family Foundation does what they do. Y'all, y'all shining the light in that darkness is a good thing. I'm so grateful. But that's not our ministry. Like, we don't, we don't really get into politics. We're typically drug into them, like in these moments. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and, but I'll tell you this, just from a, you know, I'm in the state. He's my senator. And um, yeah, we uh, should clarify. I, he represents yeah, Virginians. Yeah, he represents Virginians. Yeah. And I was I was just really shocked because I don't know. I know he had a different viewpoint, but I just thought he had was a more a little more polished than that than to do what he's done. He's never walked into uh, one of our pregnancy centers. And I'm very closely connected to the other pregnancy centers in Virginia. And I, I've never heard of him visiting there. Yeah. Did, didn't you say he called them spammy something? Yeah. Outside that? of his letter, in his letter, he called us fake clinics, which yeah. is the same thing that James Revenge refers to us as. And then outside of his letter, in his tweets, multiple tweets, he called us a uh, uh, scammy crisis pregnancy, scammy CPCs. Yeah. Uh, he said, um, you know, he used words like deceptive and predatory. And I tell you, when you use a word like predatory, uh, what's more predatory than someone who's in power and has all this authority? And here we are vulnerable. We don't have the voice he has. And him, for him to say things like this, um, uh, it, it's terrible. Well, the, the real harm here is that they are asking, all these congressmen are asking the Google CEO to basically, you know, limit the pregnancy resource centers, pro-life clinics from coming up in the search engines or putting disclaimers or blocking anything. I mean, we're, we're talking about ads, Google Map, all of it. Um, so that could actually be a real harm if women in crisis cannot even find pregnancy resource centers through a search engine, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, here in Virginia, abortion is legal through all three trimesters. And, you know, we quickly forget, uh, we we think of 2020, we only think of COVID, but something else happened big in 2020. And here in Virginia, we gutted what few abortion restrictions we had, and we we created new laws that that radically expanded abortion access here in Virginia. And I have to tell you, the restrictions we had before 2020, they were very few, and, and they weren't really restrictions. They were just laws set up to make sure that the mom knew what she was getting ready to go into, you know? and um, to make sure that she was informed. And so, you know, when you think about it here in Virginia, we gutted those restrictions um, to, to make sure that she knew what she was getting ready to get into with an abortion. And um, now, if you're asking that uh, groups like us would be blocked from the search results, how is she gonna learn this stuff? How is she gonna learn the truth about what's going on? Abortion's irreversible. It's irreversible. And so, you know, for her to find out the truth after it's happened, it's too late. And so she deserves the right to know uh, what is happening, what's developing inside of her body, who's developing inside her body before she does that. Um, Candy, one of the very first uh, patients we ever scanned with ultrasound, um, all the folks around her in her circle was, tell- was telling her, because it was early in her pregnancy, and they were saying, oh, it's just a seed. It's just a seed. And then when she was being scanned, uh, her reaction was anger. First, it was tears. Mm. She looked up. Her eyes went right to the heartbeat. And that's yeah. where their eyes typically go because the heartbeat's so prominent in the ultrasound. Her eyes went right to the heartbeat. And she just started tearing up. And then soon after that, she was angry. She was angry because she said, all these folks told me it was just a seed. Yeah. And I see its heart. She deserves the right to know. Well, Toby, one thing that's encouraging is what you're doing online. Tell us about that. 
Yeah, well, you know, um, we we are online. Uh, we're we invest heavily in online marketing, and we get a good response because our ministry uh, is very relevant to the the women who are undecided about abortion or even determined to abort. They they're very grateful uh, that they find us. They're even more grateful after they visited us, and um, so we invest heavily in that space. And I tell you, it's very competitive. Uh, especially now with the proliferation of the abortion pill, because you've got uh, where we have three brick and mortar abortion facilities in our community. Um, there are actually six more online providers targeting mm-hmm. spending money to to reach the women in our community. So what that what that done is driven up our costs. Uh, but we are competing, and not only are we competing, we're dominating. We, we our impression share is double of those who, um, of the other abortion facilities that we're not an abortion facility, of course, but the abortion providers we're, we're double, uh, the impression share of, of what, of what they have. Well, wow, that really brings it home that this spiritual battle for a woman's soul and well being and, and the baby's life is playing out online like that. And that is why we are seeing such intensity over this space. Well, We're going to continue talking about other attacks you've been experiencing and how you're navigating that. But uh, before we wind up here today, I really want to hear how you and your staff are staying strong spiritually. What is helping you to do that? Yeah, well, spiritually, it's the Lord, right? Like we can accomplish nothing without him. And uh, he is our strength. I would say, practically speaking, though, one of the chapters in scripture that I've been meditating on, my staff has been meditating on, meditating on is Psalm 27. And in those first few verses of that psalm, it talks about, and I don't have it in front of me, so I'm just kind of reciting it, but, you know, the Lord is our light and our salvation. Who shall we fear? The Lord is the strength of our life. Who shall we fear? Even if an army encamps around us, we're not going to fear we're going to be confident because our confidence is in the Lord. And it truly is like we have to lean on him in these times and we're serving him and it's a good work and it, it it's a great work. And, it, and it's, and it's, it's worth taking it on the chin for our Lord. <laughs> it is absolutely <laughs> worth taking it on the chin for our Lord. That's right. Ultimately if we're for life and we are for God's principles. We are on the victorious side. Thank you, Toby. And we're looking yep. forward to having you back again next week. Thanks so much. If today's show moved your heart to speak up for life and support those on the front lines of the ministry, learn more what you can do by visiting our website at familyfoundation.org. Just look for the After Row banner. And if you'd also like an opportunity to hear one of the nation's most compelling speakers on the sanctity of human life, you will not want to miss our gala on September 24th featuring Dr. Ben Carson. Learn more at familyfoundation.org.